uh, the air phase is an interesting one because um, these air units um, staged in Denmark, some of them, like uh, the fighters, have a, a range of 50 hexes. Um, sorry, that's the bombers with a range of 50 hexes. The Messerschmitt, the F 109s, 25, the F 110s, um, 50. And colors of 50 so forth so um, perhaps there could be some of that going on um, another point is that um, uh, because these lakes are frozen and they can become air filled so each um, each side has a lake air base counter which they can designate at a certain point when they have that hex under their control so um, the uh, 25 hexes out from Denmark is to here, and 50 is um, down to here, so that's within the range of um, bombers, um, and this is within the range of the F-109, so I've got three of, of those units, they're going to fight um, against the uh, Norwegian ones stuck on their air bases. And the Germans have also sent out two units of Heinkels each. They have seven in total. Um, no, sorry, Messerschmitt BF 110s. They look like the best bombers, as far as I can tell. Against each um, battleship task force the Brits have out there. Now there's going to be no air interception at this point, so we go straight to air combat. So in this first case, in the uh, Fournibu. Uh, airfield hex we have a um, Norwegian Gloucester Gladiator unit um, that's 26 range one uh, air to sea combat I believe defense and attack and here's the uh, Messerschmitt BF 109 unit um, okay so the attacker has to score less than his attack factor in this case a five Rolled a six, so the Messerschmitt missed, and then the defender rolls equal to or less. In this case, the gladiator has three. He rolled a nine, so they both missed. That is a uh, one round of combat, and these casualties, if there were any, would be removed simultaneously. Okay, so now we can one. Um, the defender may withdraw. If these were bombers or fairy swordfish, they cannot be attacked and they can't def and they can only defend and went intercepted. And if they attacked at an airbase, um, they cannot defend themselves at all and must go to three rounds of combat before they could withdraw. Well, this isn't a fairy swordfish, so he's okay. He can withdraw at this point. Okay, so they're going to withdraw, I think. So um, if the uh, Messerschmitt withdrew, it would have to use its remaining um, movement allowance to get to a friendly base. Ah, so they couldn't actually move out 25 hexes, could they? Or else they wouldn't be able to get home. Um, the Gladiator can move all of its movement allowance to 26. He's going to find us a base at Varnes there. We'll see how long he gets to stay. It doesn't specifically say, but I guess the uh, attacker now has to withdraw because there's no combat to do. So he's going to withdraw back to a friendly airbase in Denmark. Okay, so we do the same thing up there. Um, but then we have two mesh smiths against one Caprioni. So the two mesh smiths, they both missed, and the Caprioni missed as well. So I withdrew the Caprioni to the same place as the Gloucester and these German planes go back to Denmark. Okay, now we're going to check out the um, air, naval to air combat here. Okay, so first we have to locate them. And I think it's locate the naval units on a 1 to 6 it's su successful, on a 1 to 7 if it was combined land or sea and in a port you don't need to roll for that. Okay, for th so for that one, located, third one, second one located, all three have been located, fine. 
Okay, so it's the same procedure as the air-to-air -air combat. Um, if these um, naval units were in a port, the port would also get a chance to hit. So um, I've got two with attack factor of three, or is it going to be there? Uh, yeah, so their ground and naval strength is three anyway. So there's one hit here. And that was a two, so I can't decide. So the defender will decide where to take it. And I'll roll for their, um, their defensive rolls now. No. And two twos and two ones they need to roll, so that's pretty low. No, nothing there. So um, they're going to take a depletion on their destroyer unit, so I rotate it. Then... Um, we could go, the attacking can decide if he wants to do another round of combat. Uh, okay, but th th the third round is not permitted, so he would get another run, but I can't bomb them, as it were, indefinitely. Um, so we're going to do that in this case. I'm going to do each stack separately, because it doesn't matter. Um, so we got one hit again, and the defenders... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Zero, zero. So that's no hits on defence. Um, so again, we're going to reduce um, the unit. We'll reduce the CL, and then these fly back to base. Okay, so in the resolution of that, the um, there's one more depletion on each of these stacks. Um, and the Germans lost depletion here, and an actual there's two ones rolled against them, so a whole unit was wiped out. Um, and that has gone over into the forceful box, ready to be built up. Then it can go into the placement box and come back onto the map on a later turn. Now we would go to the air movement phase, where you could move from a one base to another and transport land units from one base to another. Um, it has to be from a base to a base, so it can't be in the middle of nowhere. Um, so I take it that parachuting will occur during the combat phase. Um, the Germans do have a number of transports, five or six there, and five or six regiments or um, battalions, companies there. So potentially they could be uh, transported in, not to a friendly base though at this point. But um, um, maybe they can be parachuted in in the land combat phase, something like that, we will see. So now we go to the naval phase, which is going to be a similar process. We have to start with naval combat movement. Now the initiative winner decides who goes first in each phase. So um, the Germans are definitely going to go first in this phase because they want to embark units if possible before getting attacked by those British units. Since this is naval combat movement, these um, non-fighting transportations will not move in this phase, but the submarine's going to, it's got 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, no, they're too far away. Um, okay, so they won't, but um, I think these ones will, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, yes. So they, I uh, know that that's if they want to combat, so that's if they're going into that hex, they're not going to, they could have been intercepted if they were within three hexes, so they won't, but this one will. So that U-boat is maybe a bit suicidally going into there. Um, naval units may intercept enemy units when they pass within three hexes if the intercepting naval units have not already been moved. Okay. And similarly, air units could intercept naval units if they pass within four hexes. Okay, so this is interesting in that the um the U the the U-boats heading towards that hex, they could send one or more units out to try and intercept. And then the defender can evade. So the U-boat could evade. So they're actually going to stick together. They let it come into the hex. And then we move to naval combat. And as I understand, it occurs during the movement and when you enter the hex. The defending player may attempt evasion. 
its successful roll of 1 to 5. A 1 to 4 against a submarine. And submarines can evade on a roll of 1 to 6. So 1 to 4, 3. So they have evaded. And admirals can affect evasion. Okay, it wasn't evasion during interception. So this unit doesn't carry on. It's finished the, the U-boat. Finished its movement there. But the evading target can move out one or two hexes in any direction and there's no interception possible of that movement. Okay, and that could also occur during the combat segment, I understand. So they've faded out. Now there's no more subs within range, so there's only Vice Admiral here with two BBs. Now that's pretty scary against three BBs and all their units, but he's what are they there for? So he's going to go in, try and intercept, or try and run back that one. So again, they can try and evade on a 1 to 5, which they managed to. Okay, so 1, 2, ah, and I should mark them as used because evasion, no, interception is, is, is an action, but evasion is not. Okay, so as I understand it, evasion costs no movement, um, but these have moved, so they cannot now intercept. Um, and I think we're going to keep the um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so they're just out of range of that unit that was poorly placed. Um, but the feeling is we want to combine the German um, naval task forces. Um, so, with that in mind, this one's one, two. So what we'd have to do is we have to declare the movement and check for interception along the way. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. So he can't reach um, the CA here, cannot reach there without possibility of interception. So he's going to head towards that way, and that U boat moves as well. Um, interception. So he automatically moves for interception and then. The guy tries to evade, so the German unit evaded. Okay. But now, the question is, they're all in the same hex, so I think there's going to be combat anyway. <laughs> okay. Let's do that combat now. I think it's going to be quite simple, like the previous combats. Ah, yes, and at the beginning of the combat, so that was tried to evade against, um, ah, okay, so let's say, so that CA evaded, but now we'll see if the BBs evade. Do they want to evade there? Because they kind of wanted to bring on this combat. Hmm, I'm not sure about that boss. No, they're going to try and evade, because it's... Better to have a fleet in being than no fleet at all. Okay. Oh, so they are successful. So that was a silly move by me of that Admiral Hipper cruiser because now he's on his own. <laughs> These ones, one, two, move out. Let's say one, two, move out there. And he's going to be combated. Okay, yes, the combat is beautifully simple, like all the other ones. So, um, what we have is uh, that these have successfully evaded, and uh, this one is being attacked by these, and that's a depleted DD there. Um, so the attacker rolls for their attack value. That's a 1, a 3, a 4, and a 6. So I'll do the 1 and the 3 first. No. And then the 4 and the 6. No. Two miss, all missed. So now he gets his defence roll, that's a four, and he misses. Um, 
if one uh, the defender may attempt evasion again okay so he's going to try and evade no it doesn't the attacking player can decide to withdraw to an adjacent hex or hexes so it's split up they could draw withdraw individual ships so now we return we're not doing that return to step two so uh, two misses and two hits so the hip is down so these do not come back the admiral hip is no more we're going to put, put permanent losses above the game there and i think i'm going to have to st stop there now and we'll do the um standard non-combat naval movement later if i'm necessary in another video because i have to go and pick up my son from his nursery but before that happens, I just want to say that um, I'm finding this game great. It's exciting. It's I, I like it. It seems to be quite simple, but um, it's a sort of what strategic operational game. I think it's going to flow really nice and quickly, and um, we'll we'll see. You know the system that I am liking, and what I'm seeing of it.